In the next several chapters, we'll be learning a lot about the nervous system. In this particular part of our study, we're going to understand how the nervous system keeps controlled conditions within the body to help us to maintain health and homeostasis. We'll also get an overview of different branches of the nervous system and we'll look in more detail at some of those as we proceed. And we'll also learn how to identify the different cells found in nervous tissue and the role of those tissues. So the nervous system's primary job is to regulate body activities by responding quickly using nerve impulses. The nervous system is responsible for our perceptions and behaviors and memories. And it also is responsible for initiating voluntary movements. This is an extremely complex system and it will require several chapters of study. So this particular chapter, we're going to focus on the organization of the nervous system and the property of the neurons, which are the nerve cells, and the neuroglial, which are the supporting cells that support the activities of the neurons. So the nervous system is divided first into two major categories, the central nervous system, which is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. So the brain, of course, is located in the cranial cavity. The spinal cord is located in the vertebral cavity and surrounded by the vertebrae for protection. And then the peripheral nervous system, which includes all of the cranial and spinal nerves. So the cranial nerves branch off the brain, the spinal nerves branch off the spinal cord, an enteric plexus of nerves that is associated with the small intestine, and then of course the sensory receptors that are located in the skin. So remember, central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system is everything else. All right, so let's start by talking a little bit about the organization of the nervous system with a little more detail. So the nervous system composes only about four and a half to five pounds or three percent of your total body weight. So it's one of the smallest but the most complex of all of the body organ systems that we're going to study throughout your anatomy and physiology work. This system is made up of billions of neurons and even more neuroglial cells that are organized into these two main divisions. Remember the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So the central nervous system consisting of the brain and the spinal cord, with the brain being located in the skull, contains about 85 billion neurons. Yes, I said billion with a B. The spinal cord is located uh, in the vertebral uh, column or within the vertebral cavity surrounded by the vertebrae uh, and it is composed of nervous tissue that extends from the brain uh, and becomes the brain stem that goes through the foramen magnum of the occipital bone. So the central nervous system processes incoming sensory information but it's also the source of thoughts and emotions and memories. So it is our integration center. It's where we make sense of things. So most of the signals that stimulate uh, skeletal muscle to contract or glands to secrete are also going to originate in the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is all of the nervous tissue outside of the central nervous system. So if it's not a part of the brain or the spinal cord, it belongs to the peripheral nervous system. So the peripheral nervous system components include nerves and sensory receptors. A nerve is a bundle of hundreds or thousands of axons and all the associated connective tissues uh, and the blood vessels that lie outside of the brain and spinal cord. We're going to look later on at the 12 sets of cranial nerves and the 31 pairs of spinal nerves that emerge from the brain and the spinal cord and follow a defined path and serve specific areas of the body. But all of these nerves outside the central nervous system carry those impulses to and from the central nervous system. So a sensory receptor, of course, is something that's going to monitor changes in the internal or external environment and then get that information into the central nervous system where we can integrate that information to do something with it, to make sense of it. We further divide the peripheral nervous system into sensory and motor divisions. The sensory or the afferent, a for admit, brings information 
from the sensor receptors into the central nervous system. So it conveys input into the central nervous system from those receptors in the body. This division provides the sensory nervous system, or I'm sorry, the central nervous system with sensory information about the somatic senses. So somatic means of the body and also the special senses such as smelling and taste, hearing, vision, equilibrium. The motor division of the peripheral nervous system is known as the efferent or efferent, E for exit, carries impulses from the central nervous system out to effectors, which are muscles and glands. So this division is going to be further divided into uh, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic system that we'll see coming up. All right, so still with the two major divisions, the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord are the integration centers, the peripheral nervous system, all of the nerves and structures that are outside of the central nervous system, and those uh, cells of the peripheral nervous system are going to be responsible for carrying information to and from the central nervous system. All right, hang in there. We'll get all this. Okay, so continuing with the peripheral nervous system, as I mentioned a while ago, we further subdivide the peripheral nervous system into the somatic and autonomic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system conveys output from the central nervous system to skeletal muscles. Okay, so only skeletal muscles. And because this part of our body, the skeletal muscles, can be consciously controlled, sometimes this part of the peripheral nervous system is referred to as voluntary. The autonomic nervous system, on the other hand, uh, does not control that skeletal muscle. So the autonomic system conveys output from the central nervous system to smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and to glands. Because these responses are not under conscious control, we sometimes refer to the autonomic system as involuntary. The autonomic system is comprised of two branches, the sympathetic branch and the parasympathetic branch. With few exceptions, the two branches have an opposing effect. So most effectors are going to receive innervation from both of these branches. One's going to cause one thing to happen, the other branch will cause the opposite action to happen. For example, the neurons of the sympathetic nervous system increase heart rate. So sympathetic, think of as accelerator, and the neurons of the parasympathetic rate will slow heart rate down. So parasympathetic usually takes care of what we call rest and digest. So parasympathetic is the break, and the sympathetic nervous system supports exercise and emergency actions. So what we typically think of as the fight or flight responses. So sympathetic is the accelerator. Parasympathetic is the break. Now before we go any further, let's do a quick overview of what we've learned so far. So remember, the central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system is everything else. Okay, so the central nervous system receives sensory input, whether it's somatic input or special senses input, through the sensory division of the peripheral nervous system. Now that information is going to be integrated in the brain and spinal cord and then processed, and if an action is to occur, it goes and information uh, will go out through the motor division of the peripheral nervous system. Now, if it is for skeletal muscle to contract, then that information is sent through the somatic division of the peripheral nervous system. And if it is something that is involuntary, then that information goes from the central nervous system out through the autonomic nervous system. Now, remember the autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic or the accelerator and the parasympathetic, which is the break, so it may cause muscle to contract and glands to secrete, or it may prohibit them or prevent them from doing their job. And then the third division of the autonomic system that we really didn't talk about is the enteric nervous system, which is, again, a branch of the autonomic nervous system, so it's involuntary, and that is going to control smooth muscles and glands that are a part of the gastrointestinal tract.